Why should we pray for those who persecute us? Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. This is one of those verses in scripture that makes you go like, say what? Because it sounds so counterintuitive. But is it? To a natural mind, it can sound counterintuitive, difficult, and maybe even impossible. But to a renewed mind, it shouldn't be. Let me explain. God's love is without bounds. He doesn't pick and choose who to love. His love is directed towards all mankind. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Loving when there is every reason not to is the standard set for every believer. It is the example we ought to emulate. The next question would therefore be, how? Every believer has the innate, God-given ability and nature to love just as God does. The Passion Translation of 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 says, Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another, because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of Him. You see, one of the marks of Christianity is loving in spite of ourselves and loving in spite of others. As partakers of the love of God, we are able to demonstrate the love of God. The verse in Matthew and 1 John do not imply that people won't rub you off the wrong way. What it means is that we can live above the actions of others and act on God's nature of love in us. When you pray concerning a person who has vexed you, the following things are taking place. You are casting that care and anxiety unto the Lord. When you do that, the agitation, frustration, vexation and wrongdoing stop being a burden that you're carrying and it instead becomes a burden lifted because you cast it unto the Lord. 2. When you are carrying the burden of resentment, anger, or bitterness towards your persecutors, all your actions were in turn under the control of your emotions. Prayer helps you get it off your chest, which is part of healing, and also allows the Holy Spirit to minister healing and peace to your soul. With the burden lifted, you are now free to think, act, and respond based on the nature of Christ in you. 3. Prayer is often a private affair and it results in an inward change. Feelings and attitudes are often realigned to the will of God in prayer. These inward changes will often be recognizable in outward actions and reactions. Saints will often leave their prayer chambers with the impression and conviction to act on the nature of Christ in them. 4. Praying for those who persecute you is acknowledging that love can achieve a lot more than hate ever could. It's the perfect depiction and an acting of what Jesus' perfect example would be.